Hi guys, um, I hope you've had a wonderful conference. I know that I'm the last talk of the day, so thank you so much for sticking around. Um, my name is Anna. Um, I do rapid prototyping at Analyct, which is an advertising technology company. And today I want to give a talk on optimizing your life, how to use linear programming in Python. So we live in a very exciting time when we have Internet of Things, AI, uh, so many cool things to help you optimize your life. And when I think about the future, it looks something like this, a magical home filled with algorithms that can help you color code your socks and keep the optimal temperature of your dinner. But I'm talking to a room full of Python developers, and you guys know very well that creating algorithms is not that simple. You need to write a lot of code, you need to run a lot of to write a lot of decisions, and um, but algorithms are fantastic in terms of they can help us overcome the limitations of the human mind, help us deal with abundance of information, help us optimize our decision making. And today I want to present an algorithm to just do just that. This is George Danzig. In 1947, he invented an algorithm called Simplex. Uh, it's named the top 10 algorithm of the 20th century. Ever since 1947, it has it's undergone numerous iterations, and right now it's the main algorithm to use in decision making with linear programming. What the algorithm does, it systematically examines vertices of the feasible region to determine the optimal value of the objective function. This area in operational research is known as linear programming, and it helps people to deal with limited resources by maximizing or minimizing specific objectives. They have, um, linear programming has wide range of applications around industries. In routing and logistics, it can help us optimize merchandise. In financial planning, it helps us allocate resources across financial portfolios. In manufacturing, it helps us determine drilling order on circuit boards. And it can decide for you how many products you want to produce given the limitations of um, resources. So to, do, to, make, to create a linear program, you don't need to know how Simplex works. For the past decade, Excel pretty much liberated linear programs. We have um, an add-in, which is called Solver in Excel, and you can very easily code your linear program there. However, if you have a Mac like me, good luck installing solvers there. It won't work. If you have a problem that has more than 200 decision variables, solver is not, also not an option. And if you want to integrate a linear problem in your application or use it within a specific system, Excel and spreadsheets would not do this. So that's a Python conference, and obviously we're going to do it in Python. Here's a plan for my talk. Um, during the next 20 minutes, I'm hoping to give you a crash course into math and syntax behind linear programs, so we just know what we're doing. I'm going to show you which modules are available in Python to solve for linear problems. And then we're going to get to exciting examples of how to use linear problems in everyday life. So optimization problems have three elements in common. They have decision variables, objectives, and constraints. Decisions is things that we want to get answers for. How many books should I read? How many calories should I consume to stick to the diet? Things like this. Objective is what we want to achieve. So there are two types of objectives, maximization and minimization. So we want to maximize profit, we want to minimize time. And then we have constraints. We live in the real world with limited amount of time, money, resources. So optimization problem allows you to define as many constraints as possible. To show you how linear problem works, we're going to decide what we're going to eat for dinner. So we have two options. We have a steak and peanut butter. Steak has, um, it costs $3 per pound and peanut butter $2 per pound. And we want to satisfy the requirement uh, of protein intake. We want to keep it to four units of protein per day. So translating this problem into a linear function is going to look something like this. Two decision variables. We will be minimizing for the cost of our dinner. And under constraint, we're going to keep the protein intake to four units. 
So this is what's going on. If we're going to plot it, um, if we're going to plot steak on y-axis and peanut butter on x-axis, this is feasible region of all the decisions that we can take for dinner. Once we put the constraint function, it basically limits our feasible region of decisions. And then we start moving our objective function. The first time the objective function crosses the feasible region will be your, minimum, uh, your optimal point. And in our case, it will be two stakes and it's going to cost us $6. So to translate this problem into Python, you need to have two things. You need to have a solver and a modeling problem. A solver is a variation of simplex algorithm and modeling framework is the glue that is going to glue all the functions together and allow you to translate math uh, into uh, an actual application. So there are so many versions of solvers available out there, so I would highly recommend not to code your own solver and use something that people already invented. As for modeling frameworks, this is where it becomes a little bit tricky. Uh, you can go with sci-fi, um, great, module, um, the problem is that SciPy will restrict you to use only NumPy arrays. You can go with PyOMO, but if you want to path your math to PyOMO, it will require you to translate it into mathematical language, which is called AMPL. And Pulp, from my experience, is the best package right now to deal with linear programs in Python. First of all, it has a very Pythonic construction. Um, it doesn't care how you're passing parameters to it, you can throw it at pandas, data frame, JSON objects, dictionaries, it will take anything. It's open source, um, installation is very easy, pip install, and the most important feature is interoperability. Uh, it means that you can, at any point of time, you can switch um, the solvers that you're using. So if you can start with a default solver and switch to something more powerful later on, it won't require you to recode your problem. So this is how it's going to look in pulp if we're going to code our dinner problem. We're going to create a object which is called problem. We're going to say that this is a minimization problem. We're going to pass it two variables, name those variables, and set the upper and the lower bound. And then we're going to append our objective function and our constraint function. Then by prop.solve, we're going to get optimization results that are going to look like this. Exactly what we arrived to. So this is a very simple uh, problem to just to give you a teaser and explain to you how math works. And now we're going to go about actually dealing with optimizing life. So I don't know about you guys, but I get every day this amazing emails with great deals on vacation. And it makes me feel really bad when I look at how many options are available. So the question is, how do you choose your perfect vacation? Also keeping in mind that we have only a certain number of days available to us. So we're going to code a linear program which will help us to decide where to go on vacation. So first we need data. I scraped a data set from the website which is called climb.com, which um, offers you discounted vacations to adventurous destinations like Everest Base Camp. And the data set looks like this. Um, it has a destination, duration, cost, and a short description of where we're going. If we are to plot the data set, uh, it shows 42 options, which vary in cost from $200 to $3,500, and they also vary by duration of the trip, somewhere from two days up to 14 days. So you can go by looking at each option, taking pen and pencil and noting down what your preference is, or you can code it as an LP problem. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, design it as a minimization problem because we want to keep our budget uh, at minimum. First, we're going to look through the data set and we're going to append every row as a decision object. This is where you're going to um, state that every decision variable should be a binary variable. So zero that we're scheduling the trip, one, uh, one is we're scheduling the trip, zero we've not. And we're going to append it to an array which is going to look like this. After this, we're going to look through the data set again, and we're going to create an optimization function. 
In our optimization function, we're going to multiply every variable by the cost of the trip, and that's what we will be minimizing. And then we're going to design constraints. So I put 10 days here, but in the IPython notebook is available, so if you want to play around and just enter your dates and your, switch to your data set, please play around. Pop allows you to export your problem into a file with .lp extension, which provides a really neat overview of what we just coded. So this is how our, how our problem looks like. And then we're just going to solve it with one line of code, which is prop.salt. We're going to assert that we reached an optimum. Most of the times, um, you can find an optimal solution for your problem um, if you coded it properly mathematically. Uh, sometimes you won't reach your optimal solution, so you want to, uh, Pulp to complain about it. Um, so after we run this code, uh, you can see that we finally got our vacation scheduled. It will cost us $762 to go on vacation for 10 days, and it picked a combination of packages. What I don't like about most of the optimizers is that they give you this very weird format, arrays, so I usually parse my results and append them back to the data format that I'm passing it back to them. So now we're going to have a column with decision scheduled, and if we're going to filter for the trips that are scheduled, we're a linear program decided to send us to Maine for four days and uh, two trips to Oregon. Very handy. Um, so this is just one um, form of the problem. You can go on and uh, change the mathematical logic to things like maximizing for ratings of the vacation packages. You can um, switch it back and forth and just play around with math. The second example that I have is how to create your reading list. So this is my first time in Portland and yesterday I went to Powell's bookstore and I was overwhelmed. There are so many amazing books and so little time to read them. So the question is how should we construct our reading list to ensure that we're a maximum number of books? So for this data set I scraped Goodreads. I took the New York Times bestseller list for 2015 and the data set looks like this. Uh, we get the name of the book, total number of pages, um, and just overall rating of the book from Goodreads. If we plot it, most of the books have on average 400 pages, and most in the lines in the ratings. So I'm going to um, ask um, Pulp to decide for me what my reading list should look like for this year. It's going to be a maximization problem because I want to read as many books as possible. So I'm going to look through the data set and create um, a decision variable for every book. I'm going to get a list of 82 objects. And then I'm going to uh, create an objective function, which is just going to sum up all of the books that are scheduled to read or not, and maximizing for it. As for constraints, we all have limited time that we can read books. Um, the average speed of a person is um, um, 300 words per minute which gives us about 60 pages per hour. And let's say if I only have five hours to read, um, I'm going to have about, I can read 13,600 pages per year. So my problem is going to look something like this. And after formatting the results, I'm going to get my list back. And it will be really cool if we can build an API and just order all of those books on Amazon and just wait for them to magically show up at my door. Where is the, the page that looks like the number of pages in that? The number of pages is coming right here. So is that in general just going to be finding the book in the small amount of pages in the highest score and where the tipping point is in the middle? So um, this one is going to basically take all of your books and just going to maximize for books. So yes, it's going to take the books with smallest number of pages to maximize for it. But that's when you can introduce more constraints and tell that I want only books that on average are more than 400 pages. That's where constraints become very handy. Um, so 46 books per year, which is a great number. Now only I just need to read them. <laughs> um, 
So I hope that I have convinced you guys that linear programs are really awesome. Uh, they're relatively easy to implement in Python, and they can be applied not only on the floors of factories but in manufacturing, but also in everyday life to solve for everyday problems. And even though math can seem very simple, I do think that simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication and which makes for simplex to be a very beautiful algorithm. Um, now I'm ready to take questions if you guys have any. Oh, sorry, yes, um, there are on, on GitHub, so um, it's my name, forward slash optimizers, and I put both IPython notebooks in there, together with data sets. Sure. Hi. Hi, so I had a friend who was trying to do this work for a decision between whether to live in Montreal or Vermont, but, but she wasn't coming up with a decision that she really wanted because I think there's going to be a lot of weights on certain factors. Right. Is there um, a way that you can test the weights that you are putting on certain factors in order to make sure you're optimizing correctly? Like, what's the best way to determine if you are correctly weighting the factors? So, I assume that this will be the factors in her optimization function. Um, it really depends how you're structuring the problem. I would highly recommend to her to, to put more constraints as. Constraints are the best way to control how optimization happens. Usually your objective function is something very generic. And then with constraints, you basically can start limiting the feasibility or region or expand it. Uh, so I would just say she needs to introduce things like a favorite restaurant is in the city that she really wants to live in and this is going to solve her problem. What does Hope do if it can't find an answer? Does it just run forever? No, so you, uh, so after you will solve for it, it's going to tell you if it solves the problem or not. So it's going to give you one or zero. If you assert that you want, you reach the optimal solution, then it will tell you, okay, I reached the optimal solution. Um, so you will need to assert for it. Um, most of the times, if I write code in production, I will just tell it, okay, only implement once you reach the optimal solution. Is that one or zero? Instantaneous. It runs pretty fast. So we, my company implemented an optimizer that has it deals with a million point two decision variables at the same time, and it runs in seventeen seconds with the default solver, which is very efficient for an optimizer. So it will be pretty fast. How do you find the commercial LP solvers stack up against the, uh, the open source ones? So commercial ones like Heroku or Mosaic, they compare to the so in the example that I used in 1.2 billion uh, decision variables, so far we didn't really need to buy a solver. So we're using open source. I think when you really want to buy a solver is the time um, that it takes for the open source that doesn't reach an efficient decision in a short period of time. Um, for the performance, I found that open source solvers perform exactly the same way as the commercial one. So, no performance issues. What's the thing that makes this slow? Is it the, num the amount of data that you're going over, or is it the number of decisions? You know, which, which one of those makes things slow quicker? So if you're constructing, uh, starting from scratch, what will probably take most of the time is constructing the problem. So looping through your data set, assigning a variable for each one of them, constructing the formulas. The solver itself runs pretty fast. So once you have your mathematical um, form defined, done. I'm pretty sure that in theory, yes. Um, this one is just going to give you a final result. But you can probably code it in such a way that it runs a simulation. So it's like, okay, once you experimented with this constraints, now experiment with this constraints and give me something else. So you can code, you probably want to put a loop around it. Are these uh, Python packages like Paul, are they limited to linear programs, or can you also do more complicated optimization problems like quadratic code? Sci-fi does have all the exotic things. I think Pulp. Um, I don't think so. I 
I won't lie, I have not coded any fancy exponential functions with Pulp. Uh, SciPy definitely allows you to do that, but I didn't like SciPy because it was taking me a long time, and the NumPy array translations was very cumbersome, because I had to transform everything. Um, so SciPy, yes. Pulp, not sure. When I got really weird results, only when I coded a very weird problem. So when I was very lazy um, and I was like, okay, so just construct this problem and just give me some answers. Yes, this is when I started, uh, when my solver started crashing. If I was pretty clear about what I'm trying to do and was very careful with constraint construction, then it was pretty lean. So I would say, most of the efforts with linear optimization goes into constructing the math problem. Once it's defined, the answer would be optimal most of the time. Thank you.